Hola amigos, this is CM De La Vega with another After Effects tutorial. This is a special one. I'll be sharing with you green screen techniques that I implemented in the making of my brother's music video, Creo en Dios and I Believe. But before we dive into After Effects, I want to share with you some simple camera tricks that I frequently use when I'm shooting on green screen. By the way, this whole entire video was shot on a Canon 7D with one single lens. It was a 17 to 55 millimeter lens. It was a 2.8 f-stop all the way. Trick number one, this whole entire video was shot on a tripod. All the camera moves were pulled off inside of After Effects. Trick number two, about half of the shots were shot vertical. What I mean vertical, I physically rotated the camera 90 degrees. Obviously you need a special tripod head to do this. And the reason I did this is because it gives me more pixels, more resolution to pull off a better key. This is very helpful when you're shooting full body shots from head to toe. Just be careful and don't cut off the talent's hands and arms. Conversely, sometimes I shot a regular rotated 90 degrees in After Effects to make it seem like my brother's climbing a mountain. Trick number three, I shot all the elements separately and they were all composited together inside of After Effects. This allows me to shoot more efficiently and it lowers down production costs. We only had eight hours to shoot both the English and Spanish version, the performances, the takes, and bring in the actors, so we had to be quick. Now let's dive into After Effects with some green screen techniques. When shooting on green screen, especially on a low budget, you may not always have that nice, bright, rich chroma green that's usually found in a studio setup. But After Effects has a nice little plugin that'll brighten up your green while keeping the integrity of the luminous and the color temperature. Now in this example, you can see I shot it with a neutral profile, color profile. The green is pretty dull. Now you may ask, hey CM, why can't you use a color curve or color level? Let me demonstrate what happens. We go to effect, color correction, color curve. We do our S curve. You can see the whole entire footage is brightened up and that's not what we want to do. We want to leave the color correction and the color grading to the very last, the very last step after we've done our keying. So let's go to the little plugin that After Effects has and it's called Selective Color. Let's go to Color Correction, Selective Color. Right off the bat, there's a whole bunch of parameters, but let's go to the greens. Now this is a little bit of trial and error and just play around with it. Just make sure that the luminance and the color temperature remains consistent, remains almost the same. In this case, let's go to the cyan, bump up all the way to 100. You can see it's already affecting the green. Let's go to the yellow, it's about 50. So let's uh, disable, enable, disable, enable. You can see the green, it's a little bit brighter. Let's uh, go to the cyan, and I think I bumped it up the blacks to 100. It's a little subtle difference. I don't think you can see it here. Now the cool thing in After Effects is that you can double up any effect. So let's go to Selective Color again. Let's go to the greens, uh, the cyan. Let's bump it up to 100. Boom, right off the bat, you can see how bright it is, looking pretty good. Now you can see it's a big difference. It's a lot brighter, but the luminance and the color temperature remains the same. Now let's go to our keen, let's key him out. Let's go to Effect, Keen, Key Light. Let's select the green. Now for the screen gain, a value between 100 and 120 uh, works pretty well. In this case, let's input 115. For the screen blur, value between zero and one is good. Let's go to 0.5. Now let's scroll down to the screen matte, the clip black and the clip white. The black, let's make sure that the edges are completely black. So about 15. And then the white, we want to, the goal is to have this completely white. About 78. Works good. Let's shrink the mat anywhere between 0 and 1 pixel. Let's go about 1 pixel and let's soften it by 0.1. Last bit, replace method. Make sure you select hard color. Let's go to final result. And let's add this little background contrast so you can see it. And it looks pretty good. Now when you're shooting on green screen, anything that is white or metal will reflect. So in this example, you can see right here, and you can see areas here that should be white, completely white. And it's a little bit transparent. 
So a little trick that I do, which involves some work, but it'll make it look very clean, is double up the footage. Let's rename it, hit enter, fix holes. What I do is, in the screen mat, let's make this zero. In the clip white, let's make it five. Now, you have a whole bunch of garbage right there, but that doesn't matter. Let's go to final result. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mask. You can use a pen tool or you can use one of the shapes. In this example, I'm using one of the shapes. And let's hit none for now for the mask so you can see it. And we're just gonna keyframe it. Wherever he moves, we're gonna keyframe it so it's always in place. Now, this is already done. Let me show you what I've done. And in this example, I have two masks and you can see all the keyframes. Now you may ask, hey CM, why are you using key light? Why can't we use it without any effects? Now the thing is when you use key light and you use a replace method, the colors are shifted. So you wanna keep the consistency of that color shift and that's why I'm using key light again. Now there is one more, there is one more effect to help out with your keying and that is effect matte, hard matte. Now there's two options, hard matte and soft matte. Soft matte works well for anything that is hair and hard matte works good for an example like this one. So you got four parameters. Now feather and contrast work in tandem like a seesaw. So you need to adjust these almost at the same time and just play around with it. There's no other way around but just to play around. Uh, the chatter, there's not a lot of noise crawl, so let's bump that down to 5%. And then in this example, it was about 3 for the feather, 40% for the contrast. And for the shift edge, we'll shift it 20% inside. And let's zoom in so you can see. Let's disable it. So you can see right here, it's a little bit, it's not that clean, but once we enable the effect, it's nice and smooth. Obviously it has motion blur and it's gonna decontaminate the edge color. So anytime there's a lot of blur, a lot of fast movement, it's gonna go along with it. So it's looking pretty good. And this will lead us to our second trick. Now I love long continuous takes. Takes that go from like a medium shot to a full body wide angle shot back to a medium shot or a close up. Now it's very demanding for the artist, for the camera operator. We both have to be in sync. Our performances must be on point. So I came up with a solution that is very effective, and that is to shoot in different segments, for example, clip A, B, and C, and join them together or stitch them together inside of After Effects. Now obviously this has to be all pre-planned before you shoot. So in this example, let's use this shot as our clip A. Let's go to this one. Uh, you can see it's a wide angle, we shot a vertical. It's our, let's use this as our clip B and back to another medium shot, we'll use this as our clip C. Now, once you key them out, let's go back. Once you key them out, you bring them into your comp, make them 3D layers, make sure they're in the same Z depth. Create a camera, obviously, 35 millimeter works good. Here's our camera. Let's go to our top view. Just make sure that each clip is in the same Z depth, zero, zero, zero. You can see from here. And then the next thing is hit S for scale and we're gonna size them up. So let me show you. We want, we want to make them the same size. So if this is our clip A, this will be our clip B, make them the same size. And then this is our clip C. We go back. Not only that, once you make them the same size, put them roughly in the same X and Y position as well. So they kind of line up. The next step, and is very important, is to find a good cut point. Good place we're gonna cut between clip A and B, between clip B and clip C. takes a little bit of trial and error. There's no way around it. You, you're just gonna have to play around with it until you find a good cut point. It took me a while uh, to find and fine tune. So in this case, you're going from clip A to B. 
And you can see the hand here is in the same spot, which helps out a lot. Make sure that the talent's hands and arms remain consistent, that they're in the same spot going from one clip to the other. Clip B, clip C, and you can see the, the hand is in the same spot. This hand moves a little bit down, but that's, that's okay for now. Now the next step is to animate the camera, move the camera at or near your cut point. So in this example, I created a null object, go to layer, new, null object, make it a 3D layer, and you can, we, I parented the camera to the null object, so I'm animating the null object instead of the camera attributes. So we look at the keyframes, got our camera. You can see that we're moving from A, you can see here. Let's move it up here. We can go from A to B, moving forward again to clip C, which is a medium shot. We see it along with the background. Let's, let's render into memory. So it looks pretty good. Now if you add a little bit of motion blur, it should do the trick. Add your backgrounds, add your environments, work with opacity to fade in and to fade out. This is CM De La Vega with another After Effects tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. Stay creative, let it flow like agua from an agua.